بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر and today with the first lecture you know the first is the introductory and today it is the second but officially the first of this new course that we started and let me clear a confusion about the previous video in the previous video I mentioned the name of the course is electronic devices and circuits uh, so you people would be wondering that where are the field effect transistors where are MOSFETs and operational amplifiers etc in this course content so I did not mention them because because I have divided this course into two parts and this particular part is the part one of this course all right so we call this part as the electronics one part right electronics one and and the things that we study in electronics one those contents were mentioned over here I forgot to mention that this is the first part of this course right the FETs the MOSFETs the operational amplifiers etc will be dealing in the second part of this course we will have a separate introductory video for that which will be obviously mentioned in the course contents part of the video and this is because we it goes in our university like this right uh, electronics one is taught in the fourth semester and then electronics two in is taught in the fifth semester which I myself am studying right now so coming back to the topic so today it's just again a simple introductory video you know you you know these things right we just start a little uh, analysis of semiconductor materials now you basically know what a semiconductor material is but to start something you need to revise it first you need to revise the basics you know you have studied these in your basics but We'll be revising it here. So you know that basically that we have three types of materials. Three types of materials, right? And uh, they are over here. We are dividing them on the basis of their conduction level, right? So the first one is conductor. The second is insulator. And the third is semiconductor. So these are the three types of materials defined on basis of conduction. So let me write over here defined on the basis of their conduction level. And what conduction level? The conduction of electrical current, right? Electrical current and what is an electrical current so this is the flow of electrical charges so we are defining these materials on their capability to allow the flow of charges through them all right now a conductor is a material which allows a generous flow of current through it a generous flow of charge it allows a generous flow of charge which means you apply a voltage to it this happens when when a voltage is applied when a voltage is applied it allows current to flow through it insulator is a material which do not allow do not allow any current through it or any flow of charge through it I believe this uh, marker would be clear right this is a new marker so it will take a little time to get set up you know when the new marker is there so we like writing on the board but you don't like seeing it because you cannot see it clearly so insulator do not allow any charge to flow through it now a semiconductor is a material is a material whose conductivity is in between that of a conductor and an insulator whose conductivity is in between that of a conductor and insulator which means a conductor would let all the charge flow through it an insulator will block all the charge flow to it whereas the semiconductor will let some of it flow through it and will block some of it which means it will allow a little sum of the amount to pass through it 
So this is the basic definitions. The energy band diagram will explain it further, which we'll see in the next video most probably. Today I will just read out read it out for some important points from the book, right? So in this we have a, a, a point in the introduction about integrated circuit that the first IC, the first IC integrated circuit was developed by was developed by uh, uh, let me read out the name is Jack Kilby Jack Kilby Jack Kilby and it was developed in have a look it is 1958 working in the Texas Instruments lab so he developed an integrated circuit in 1958 and today it's 2020 so have a look now most of these devices it's written in the book most of these devices that we are using right now were developed as early as the 1930s and they are still in use which means not those devices the the idea is still in use they have been more and more enhanced the basic fundamental principle is the same so the first IC was developed in uh, this 1930 uh, 1958 right now there is a point that uh, the Core i7 processor has about 731 million transistors Core i7 processor right the Intel Core i7 Core i7 processor has 731 million transistors on a single chip million transistors on a single chip right and the single chip you would have seen that in your DLD lab or your microprocessors lab the integrated circuits this much a one centimeter cube of volume 731 million transistors on that now there was a scientist named uh, here we have Dr. Jordan E. Murray in 1965 in 1965 Dr. Jo uh, let me write down the spelling Jordan E. Murray. Jordan E. Murray. Now this is the name of the scientist. He predicted, he predicted that the use of uh, a, 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 a transistor on a chip would double every two years which means that in this year if you're using two transistors on a single chip so after four years you would have the capability of using four transistors on a single chip after another two years you will have the capability of using eight transistors of a single chip he, de he devised it in 1965 today in 2020 I've told you in the Core i7 processor we have a 731 million transistors million transistors 731 million transistors on a single chip this is where the technology is taking us. This much thing, 731 different types of thing on it. If, if you take this much piece of paper, you can hardly draw 50 dots on it, right? But on that much area, we are having 731 million transistors. So, moving on to the next point. We have the next article. That is uh, the semiconductor material, germanium, silicon and gallium arsenide. So the most important semiconductors, the most important semiconductors, the most important semiconductors for us, especially in this course, semiconductors are germanium, uh, silicon, and gallium arsenide gallium arsenide right and the symbol so for germanium it's GE for silicon it's SI for gallium arsenide it's GAAS so these are the three most important semiconductors that especially we will be studying in this course right now the next point is that the discovery of the diode was made in 1939 and a transistor in 1947 all right so, so so the red color diode was discovered when diode was discovered in 1939 diode 
discovered in 1939 and the transistor was di discovered in 1947. And, uh, and, and in the first few decades, this germanium was used almost exclusive, this, this germanium, right? For the, for, the, for, the, for the construction of this diode and transistor, right? Why? Because, because it was easy to refine and it has high levels of impurity. It was easy to define and it had high levels of impurity, right? But then, then it, it had uh, temperature sensitivity, okay? It had low levels of reliability. It wasn't reliable because of, because of uh, its temperature sensitivity, right? Uh, then uh, silicon had uh, improved temperature sensitivity so in 1954 the first silicon transistor was introduced 1954 first silicon uh, transistor was introduced the problem with the germanium was its temperature sensitivity. Temperature sensitivity. Now, as the time passed, we a problem I with the silicon because the computers started operating with different modern computers. They, they operate on a very high and high speed. Similarly, other communication systems required high speeds right and silicon was uh, less temperature sensitive but it, and it is also the most abundant material on uh, present on the earth right and then the problem with this was of speed right so let me write this down also that this is a less sensitive material silicon is less temperature sensitive and is one of the most abundant materials on our planet earth the problem with it was of speed now so now to solve this problem we we did what uh, uh, the result was the development of the first gallium arsenide transistor in the early 1970s the the answer to this is what the, the 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 discovery of first gallium arsenide discovery of gallium arsenide transistor in early 1970s right and this gallium arsenide transistor had the speed five times had speed so where should i write it where should i write it so let me write it over here had speed five times that of silicon transistor okay is that fine okay so this had the speed five times that of a of a what of a silicon transistor now this uh, this brief review of the history of the semiconductor materials is not meant to imply that gallium arsenide will be the only material appropriate for solid state construction germanium devices are still being manufactured although for a limited range of applications now germanium is left far behind you know but it is still being manufactured but it has a very low range of applications uh, now uh, again even though it's temperature sensitive about germanium it does have characteristics that find applications in a limited number of areas given its availability and low manufacturing costs it will continue to find its place in the product catalogs as noted earlier silicon has the benefit of years of development and is leading semiconductor for electronic components and ICs. so silicon is still the major part of these integrated circuits and other electronic equipments in fact silicon is still the fundamental block of Intel's new line of professor processors <laughs> right and I told you that they're using these transistors in the core i7 We have 731 million transistors. So that's about the first article and I believe uh, Wait, 
discrete and solid state this is the the, the term that we'll be using uh, quite frequently in this course discrete and the other is solid state so discrete mean individual discrete means what individual one this is one individual material this is a discrete structure of this marker right and solid state solid state mean it has a hard crystal structure solid state refers to a hard crystal structure and hard is something you know and for the crystal structure stay tuned we'll be seeing some more details in the next video for this i've taken a lot of time so we'll continue this lecture in the very next one as well so see you there very soon till then take care goodbye